Hi students, today let's discuss regarding gas gangrene. So gangrene means it is a death of body tissue. That is a uh, definition or the meaning of gangrene. Okay, so gas gangrene means it is a fast spreading and potentially life threatening form of gangrene caused by bacterial infection from Clostridium bacteria. Okay. So gangrene वाले इन्दर एक body tissue में डटते नहीं आना gangrene वाले इन्दर gas gangrene वाले इन्दर it's a kind of gangrene and it is a kind of fast spreading and potentially life threatening condition mainly caused by bacteria called Clostridium bacteria. Okay. So it is also called as Clostridial myonecrosis. Okay. So Clostridial, why it is called as Clostridial? It is caused by Clostridium bacteria and myonecrosis means what? Death of tissue. That is the word meaning of necrosis. Death of tissue death. Okay. So the infection causes toxins to form in the tissues, cells and blood vessels of the body. This bacteria will release toxins that cause tissue death and release a gas. That's why they call, that's why it is called as gas gangrene. Okay. So once the infection occurs in the person's body, the bacteria will release some kind of toxins and this kind of toxins cause tissue death as well as release a gas. Okay. It can occur anywhere on the body, but it mostly common affects arms as well as legs. That is the most primary prone areas for developing gas gangrene. Okay, so this is a picture of gas gangrene. Gangrene, you can see this. There will be some kind of blister form, blister like um, skin changes that you can see on the thighs as well as on the foot. Okay. The main causes of gas gangrene is Clostridium perfringens. Okay, that is a primary responsible bacteria for causing this infection. It can also be caused by group A streptococcal bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus and Vibrio vulnificus. So these are some of the bacteria which can be caused this infection but mostly it is caused by a bacterium called Clostridium perfringens. Okay. Most gangrene infections occur in situations where open wounds from an injury or surgery are exposed to bacteria. So like tetanus also, it is mainly caused by in the caused by the contaminated wounds or surgical wounds. Okay. Non-traumatic gas gangrene, a more rare form of gas gangrene, can develop when the when blood flow to body tissues is compromised and bacteria gets inside. So there will be one form of gas gangrene that is called as non-traumatic. So Non-traumatic means, traumatic means what? It is mainly due to some trauma. Okay. So non-traumatic in the other, the body is gas gangrene developed. Blood circulation is a particular body site, tissues, blood circulation is a lot of oxygen compromised. Oxygen compromised is a lot of bacteria developed. So that is non-traumatic gas gangrene. There is a great risk uh, in people who have a peripheral vascular disease, atherosclerosis or diabetes. So there is a person who has blood circulation. So there is a non-traumatic form of gas gangrene. So here you can see the pathogenesis of gas gangrene. First of all, the bacteria enter the broken skin or wound. So other dominated. Spores are produced. So bacteria can be entered. This is considered as a bacteria that will enter into this wound. In the wound. Spores produce it. The bacteria present in the circulation system. So a wound will carry to the circulation system. The toxins are in the anaerobic tissue is present. Okay, so once bacteria are present in the circulatory system, the anaerobic tissue will be present. This bacteria grow and form into the muscle carbohydrate. So this bacteria can be grown and form in the muscle carbohydrate. The toxins and enzymes are produced. So after the fermentation or the muscle carbohydrate, there will be production of toxins as well as enzymes. Okay, example of enzymes in wood. Collagenases, proteases, and lipases. 
these enzymes will kill other host cell and extend the anaerobic environment so this kind of uh, it is very powerful enzymes and which it will it will be having a capacity to kill other or nearby cells okay so that this infections can be extended into the anaerobic environment also it will produce gases that gas mainly hydrogen gas and gas bubbles crepitant tissue or distorted tissue so this is the pathogenesis or pathophysiology of gas granule so it will be started from the bacterial invasion and it will be ended with the destroy or tissue damage along with the production of gas okay the main symptoms of gas gangrene would fever first of all if the wound is contaminated automatically the person will exhibit fever air under skin it is mainly due to the release of gas then pain in the area around the wound it is mainly due to the decrease of oxygen supply okay swelling in the area around the wound it is a kind of sign of infection too pale skin that quickly turns gray dark red purple or black it is mainly due to the decrease oxygenation blisters with foul smelling discharges because this wound is contaminated as well as there will be growth of bacteria excess sweat in increase heart rate it can be occurred due to the fever vomiting yellow skin and eyes jaundice it is a late sign certain injuries have a higher risk of causing gas gangrene in wound if the person is getting muscle injuries severely damaged tissues wounds that are very deep wounds that are contaminated with stool or dirt especially those that might occur on the farm okay so these are the kind of uh, some of the examples of injuries that can be easily changed into gas gangrene form adey kodulum gas gangrene develop cheyan saadhyamulla wound inde classification la varnikkunnathu muscle injuries ulla aalkarile damage deep deep wounds deep wounds okay anengil bhayangara contamination avala saadhyatha kodulana so once contaminated ayala in depth like infections poganana saadhyatha kodulana ini the patients who are at an increased risk for developing gas gang they are risky group of angante aalkare nokkunu first of all diabetes mellitus a chronic diseases ulla aalkarile then arterial disease colon cancer frostbite open fractures Used to contamination needle changing substances into the muscles. Okay, so itrem alkali. Now, this actual disease we are talking about work blood supply. So, non-traumatic kind of gas gangrene are also seen. So, this is a picture of atherosclerosis. So, you can see that there will be fat deposition, so that this blood flow will be obstructed. Okay, then colon cancer as well as diabetes patients with this disease are more prone to develop. gas gangrene then how we can rule out this gas gangrene first of all the history collection in the history collection you can collect history regarding the wound when the wound has happened so why it happened either to any penetrating injury or not whether it is a deep or what is the cause for getting this wound okay and we should collect any history of diabetes mellitus coronary artery disease or peripheral vascular disease etc or colon cancer etc okay then physical examination physical examination you can rule out whether the patient is having wound infections or not nokka adu pole blisters undo nokka fever associate ya tachycardia wound infection in ee karyangal ella physical examination assess kiya then color of the pus okay skin culture to Test for the presence of Clostridium per fringes and other bacteria. Now, the skin culture itself, the skin infections are required. Upon our skin culture, we can arrange something. Blood test to check for an abnormally high WBC count because it's a kind of infection, so that WBC count can be elevated, which can indicate an infection. Okay. Then, imaging studies can be done like X-rays to visualize tissues and check check for the presence of gas or special studies such as MRI or arteriogram. Arteriogram shows that blood circulation is fine. Okay, so now we have to X-ray see if no kumbaria gas in the middle presence or not. Okay, then how we can manage? First of all, skin graft. 
Damaged tissues can also be treated with the type of reconstructive surgery. It's very, very important. That is one of the most important measures through which we can manage gas gangrene is skin graft. skin damaged So we can manage with a grafting of a healthy skin. Okay. During a skin graft, doctor will remove healthy skin from an unaffected part of the body and attach it to the damaged area. The skin help restore any skin damage caused by gas gangrene. So gas gangrene one another patient complete at the necrosis type of tissues. So adhine are necrosis type tissues are to number body useful. So adhine remove the healthy tissues in the replace in the procedure in the skin grafting in the parent. Okay. So this is a picture of skin graft. Okay. Amputation. In severe case of gas gangrene, amputation of a limb may be necessary to prevent the infection from spreading into the rest of the body. Okay. So gas gangrene that is called as amputation. Okay. So once a wound has healed, patient may be fitted with a prosthetic limb. This is an artificial limb that may be attached to the amputation site to replace the missing body part. So amputation carry it wound heal initiation processes you see. Okay. There is another procedure called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. It is mainly to breathe gas gangrene. This type of therapy involves breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized chamber for about 90 minutes or one and a half hours. Patient will receive two to three treatments per day. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy study increases the amount of oxygen in the blood, helping infected wounds to heal faster. Among infected wound and the fast start in the adequate oxygen supply. In in case patient in and complications like diabetes, mellitus, and the comorbidities on atherosclerosis on blood circulation core. So other oxygen carrying capacity core. Therapy and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We have to place the patient in the place. That is the complete patient pure oxygen. The duration is the average duration of 90 in this time. So, this is a picture of hyperbaric oxygen therapy system in which you can place the patient in an oxygen chamber. So, through this, the person will get continuous oxygen supply. Continuous oxygen supply is adequate to patient in a wound cyclotrola infection. Okay. Then, complications of gas gangrene, permanent tissue damage. If it is not treated well at the beginning stage itself, can be leading to complete damage of the tissue. Jaundice, liver damage, kidney failure, shock, widespread infection, coma, and death. So, these are some of the most complications that we can develop in case of gas gangrene if it is not treated well. How we can prevent this? The best way to prevent gas gangrene is to practice proper hygiene. Because contaminated wound in the gas gangrene. So we should manage wound care properly. Clean the skin thoroughly and to cover the wound with a bandage. We can expose the wound unless and until doctor's order. Doctor Parayada, we can expose the wound. Contact doctor at the first sign of infection. Infection is the same as surgical wound. So we can see the patient in a bite. We can see the patient signs of infection like redness, swelling, pain, discharge. So, we start the treatment of the immediate doctor. Okay, so this is a picture of how we can clean or cover a wound with a gauze as well as a roller bandage. Okay, then making certain lifestyle changes can also help to reduce the for gas gangrene. Gas gangrene is a prevention of measures and lifestyle modifications. Then of avoiding tobacco products, Properly caring for and any existing health conditions such as diabetes or arterial disease. And the diseases are not going to be maximum number control. And the blood circulation patients are going to go. Okay. Maintain a healthy weight by exercising regularly and eating a health food diet that are largely consists of lean protein, vegetables and whole beans. Because the comorbidities are going to be managed enough to manage comorbidities.
Okay, so in this session, we had seen regarding one of the most important conditions called gas gangrene. It is mainly caused by bacterium in the group of Clostridium. And we had seen regarding the etiological factors or the pathophysiology, and we had discussed regarding the clinical manifestations. Okay, so how we can manage? We can manage with proper care of the wound. So if the wound is not contaminated, there will be no chance for getting gas gangrene. So once the wound is infected, there will be a higher chance for getting gas gangrene okay and we can manage in the skin grafting hyperbaric oxygen therapy or even amputation okay so as a nurse as we should as a nurse we should have the responsibility to ed provide education to the patient on the importance of adequate wound care so if if it is care properly we can prevent this kind of much complications okay so i hope you got an idea regarding this condition well so please go through these slides and if you have any doubt you can contact me or call me okay thank you